Hey, fantasy gals. I'm Aubrey. And I'm Peyton. And today we are reviewing the gothic fantasy book, One Dark Window by Rachel Gilling. Yes, so join us with a cup of coffee as we dive between these paper sheets. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Alrighty, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode. We finally have a book review for everyone. <laughs> uh, this season has been hitting, especially me, right in the face of the book slump. But, but this is such an exciting episode to have. Aubrey has been waiting for me to finish this book. <laughs> and I'm finally done with, of course, One Dark Window. A uh, quick, just little rundown if this is your first episode. If it is, hello, welcome. We are the Hardcover Podcast. You hey. are currently in our NS section, which is our non-spoiler section. We like to give a short bit of our episode to the readers that just want a little taste of what the book's about, but without spoiling all of the crazy stuff that goes down in this book. Um, and then once we go into our spoiler section, we will let you know so you can get on out of here or have it spoiled for you because I'm all for that too um so aubrey's <laughs> gonna give you a quick blurb plot summary of the book um to yes. just kind of get you interested and then we'll talk about just general thoughts without spoilers one dark window follows elspeth a girl with a monster in her head as she attempts to cure her lands from the dark magic infecting it she joins our brooding and mysterious captain of the dressed deers, Raven, and his family <laughs> on a quest to collect all 12 slash 13 providence cards, the magical tarot cards of their world that grant its users power and together, if you have the whole deck, can stop the curse on the land and save our FMC's life naturally there's a naturally. mission whatever 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 that's a bit uh, of a, a mouthful oh my gosh yes that was so much so much goes <laughs> on in this book it is insane uh yep. so getting into our non-spoiler section here uh yep. i usually don't start at this point but i feel like this book we have to it's a requirement it, we have to talk about the world <laughs> building and more so the magic system also the fact that this is a gothic setting on top of it yes we've got a like heavy subgenre influencing this in a it's way crazy. that i feel like our standard like akatar fourth wing the world building is not complex and the world building's a bit complex with this one this is fully like adult fantasy and i don't even think it's necessarily that difficult as long as you're not thinking about like the specifics, but it's a very unique magic system, which is super exciting and also like a learning curve. <laughs> yes. So the magic system in, uh, oh my God, plunder. That's the name of. <laughs> I think it's blunder. Blunder. That's what it it's is. Blunder. <laughs> plunder oh my gosh plunder plunder, plunder. Imagine? Be plunder. Like, this is the bad district so it's called plunder, plunder. <laughs> okay so this the, the these cards <laughs> in this magic system they are tarot cards and there's 12 13 of them that's like yeah the, I, there's i have a lot of lore. theories about this there's a whole lore behind it but regardless <laughs> they're these magic deck of cards and they have magical powers but there's a good and bad to them so while there you may have be able to have this new power with them then they'll there's a consequence to magic so by using a card there's a consequence and it's really negative um so there's always like in the book they love talking about the balance of power it creates this crazy magical dynamic in this book that honestly i just like haven't read in so long <laughs> and it was so refreshing yeah uh, Barbara you are right like it takes a minute to get into yes and sometimes I'd find myself the the book includes a lot of epigraphs that yeah. include <laughs> so basically in world there's this book that explains the magic system and it's almost like of a alders that the characters use yes mm -hmm. and so there will be epigraphs that include portions of it and it's very uh, you will get into it more but this is a very like stylized book yeah and so there will be these like almost poems slash prophecies slash textbook styles telling you what specific cards do 
And I was like, oh, this is stupid, like, lore dumping. And then <laughs> yeah, you'd, right? like, get into the middle of the chapter, and I'd go, well, let me let me go back. Let me look at that. <laughs> you know what's so funny? And I'm going to reference this a lot in this book. Okay. How it reminds me a lot of The Invisible Life, Addie LaRue. Really? In a very more fantasy setting, what we were hoping for with Addie LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But regardless, um, yeah, like, I, I, those epigraphs were crazy because – you learn that whatever cards we're talking about, that's what's going to get brought up in that chapter. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where you're like, okay, I'm going to focus on what this is saying. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to like, <laughs> you know, commit to the bit here. And you're like, I still don't get really get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, it took a minute to get used to. I will say some of them were easier for me to remember than others. So we have, it's a, like a deck of cards and within that, there was like 12, 13-ish different types of cards. And certain cards were more rare than the others. So one of the cards is called a maiden card. Yes. And it has like a pink aura to it. Basically, it will give someone beauty. And that would be the pros. You get to be like your most like Athena. Uh, oh, I said Athena. <laughs> you get to be your most like Aphrodite beautiful yes, self. Beautiful. Gorgeous. But the con is that you'd start to become callous and yes. cruel and, and apathetic. Horrible. And yes. so the more you use the card, the more permanent the beauty sets in. But also so does more permanent um, the the apathy and the, the behavior con, which was exactly. interesting to see. And some of them, like, I just couldn't keep up with what the consequences <laughs> were. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'd hear them all the time, too, because I do, like, listen and, read, like, mm -hmm. physically read this book. And so sometimes you'd hear a word, like the Scythe card, and then reading it is different. And it's like, wait, what does that do? And there's, like, too many <laughs> personalities. And so on our script, I have a little cheat sheet that actually I think the Fantasy <laughs> yeah. podcast did for everyone. Thanks, girls. Um, But now there – and some of these, like, I don't even remember them talking about, which I'm sure in the second book will get brought back up. Um, yeah. So, Regardless, we'll backpedal here. The cards are what this whole series is built upon. That's mm -hmm. actually the plot line, as Aubrey described earlier, is that yes. the idea is that you need to collect these cards. There's this magical fog that has overtaken the city, the town, the whatever, the world, and the king wants to get rid of it. Um, and it's getting wants worse. Wants to get rid of it. Wants to get rid of it. Um, and it's <laughs> getting worse and worse and worse. And so it's this character's mission to, you know, blah, 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 you know, fight the dragon. <laughs> so it's a very layered, complex, like, you have to kind of understand the magic system to understand the plot of this. So we have this deck of cards that give anyone can use this. Anyone can have powers if they are actively using the card, if they have it on their person, whatever. Okay. So we have that. And that was created by our main lore guide, the Shepherd King, like yes. 100 years ago or whatever. Since then, this fog that Peyton was talking about has taken over and it's starting to like creep in and it makes like traveling through the woods dangerous. And it gives us this very like eerie gothic setting. It like, messes with your brain if you're in it too long. And another thing that it does is with it has started these children that are born with magic. And that's not allowed. The only magic that's allowed is the magic given by people who own a card. So yes. also tied to the class system. Because to privilege. Because the cards. Because what the poor privilege. person is going to have a card. Yeah. But anyone can be born with magic. But it's considered like a disease. Because this fog is like fucking with the magic. And right. so if you're born with magic. Then basically the king has is out for you and they collect and they round up all of the children born with magic and they just like keep them at the palace and it's it's vague what happens but basically it seems like they're just gonna get murdered yeah but then they'll <laughs> publicly sorry you're gonna get there. oh yeah, yeah yeah and they publicly execute some like if you've been caught like hiding your child or yeah. you're an adult with magic but it's also very hard to become an adult with magic because there's also i forget i don't know if you remember the word like dissolution uh, oh degeneration is that yeah the, the degeneration process yeah yes so anyone you know, with past like 18 magic yet yeah, they don't live and they all have a different way that they degenerate but basically having magic will eventually kill you and so that's kind of like the king's excuse for 
wrapping up all these children is because they uh, treat it as if it's an infection. Though, from what we can tell, it doesn't actually spread. Yeah. Um, maybe like with children or whatever. So, anyways, of course, our main girly has magic. Right. Yes. This is this is uh, the fantasy story. Obviously. But how she's connected and like this is sort of like oh, we don't talk about her. Yes. Like she's the like oh, we don't talk about Elspeth. Like we don't we don't talk about her because she is away in a cabin, uncle's cabin, <laughs> being hidden away from the world. Yep. Um because girl is like not well. <laughs> yes, it's like I'm like considered like she's sick, she's cursed, and so her daddy was the captain of the Drasteers, which is basically like the king's guard type situation, a very high police military position, and so he was able to send her away and hide the fact that she has powers, so she doesn't get round up obviously but then like her new family kind of treats her like shit because her dad remarried and like they <laughs> She's got know sisters and shit it's kind of like cinderella <laughs> yes i actually i have that in here to talk about when we get to that because there's a lot of fairy tale influence on this yes. book and it's shaped by one in specific which i'm not going to share i know that it's part of the marketing oh you were talking me, about that yeah the fairy tale that is the main inspiration for this story i think if you know that it kind of spoils the ending right but it is heavily influenced by other things i mean even just like the opening chapter of her like walking through the woods and she wears like in like the the art you can see her in like this red outfit also, just a moment for the collector's copy. Oh, yes. I got the very, very special Barnes and, Dish- Barnes and Noble special editions, which is very nice because they don't have a hardcover copy that isn't special editions. Like when I finished this story back in the summertime, I went to Barnes and Noble so excited to get my copy and yeah. they didn't have. And I was like, okay, well, I'm a hardcover girly. Yeah. Um, literally and figuratively. Like, I need this. Uh, so I immediately special ordered the editions. I I want those editions. I there are, get on that. You should honestly, I think there's, they still have them just like at Barnes. Yeah. And they weren't so like pretty. that much more expensive than any hardback book. And just like the vibe of the book in general mm-hmm. is just so good. So based on like... Talking about the fairy tale, it gets like Grimm's brother. It gets uh-huh. like obviously that's a Cinderella story. Um, the gothic nature of it, the mist, the darkness, these cards, like yes, and um, I love it. So our, yes, our main character we have we have a cast of characters, and this is the thing <laughs> that kind of confused me in the book is they have yeah. very artsy names too. Um, yes, and switching between the book and listening. And then, like, keeping everyone under wraps and, like, also being like, wait, that guy's a good guy. No, that guy's a bad guy. So going into this book, just know that you're going to be confused. And it's okay. Maybe if you need to, like, you know, write down a few notes to, <laughs> to, to try to keep shit together. <laughs> we have to talk about the pros because oh, that is, yes. as um, someone with a creative writing degree, I just am obsessed. I love a good prose. You guys know this. This is one of the reasons I love Holly Black's work so much. And Rachel Gillian really knocked it out of the park. It has such a, like, whimsical and, like, fairy tale, as if you are, like Peyton said earlier, Brothers Grimm, like, as if you're being told yes. this, like, dark and enticing story. Every single sentence is so beautifully crafted in this book. I was so fucking obsessed. Yeah, the writing was really good. I I was getting, like, this is the perfect storm mm-hmm. for me of what I wanted out of, like, Divine Rivals and Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Yeah. It yeah. has that, like, highbrow writing style, but with that, it's, I just feel like it's so rooted in the fantasy, like, the high fantasy realm that, and I don't read a lot of gothic fantasies, so I don't know, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, it was really hard for me to get into in the beginning, like, it took me mm-hmm. a minute until I, yeah. I connected with the characters, but yeah, I mean, the writing just, like, by the end, like, the, the last quarter uh, of this book, the writing, like, uh-huh. I don't really, I didn't really care about a lot of the plot by then, I was just so enticed <laughs> by her writing style. Yeah, let me give you guys all a little teaser. This is just on the back of the book. Um, 
but it kind of shows off the nature that we're talking about. There once was a girl, clever and good, who tarried in shadow in the depths of the wood. There also was a king, a shepherd by his crook, who reigned over magic and wrote the old book. The two were together, so the two were the same. The girl, the king, and the monster they became. Does that not make you want to read the book? And that gets brought up again and again and again. And, and again. again. We didn't even get into the nightmare version, but I, I just kind of want to see yes. the spoiler section. I'm not going to lie. But we can get into it a little bit. <laughs> yes, I know. Because oh, these characters, I loved uh, so many characters in this book, but the monster in her head, the nightmare, was he was so fucking perfect. Like, so perfect of just, like, a batty old creature of myth who just keeps saying these like rhymes and poems in her head and he's definitely like not aligned with her and goals throughout the plot oh it's it's so good guys so let's actually give our star rating so we can yes. really dive into this story in the spoiler section yeah as i said i just finished this today i'm rating it 4.5 um <sighs> be- and I want to read it five stars. And honestly, I, this is a reader era. I think if I would have been less distracted and just watched, um, not watched. Oh my gosh, that's how I read books. <laughs> I literally watch with my head. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. If I would have read this quicker, I really think this would have been a five star for me. But it, mm-hmm. there are some like I wasn't really invested in the the romance as much as I thought I was going to be. That's there's, true. There's like little things that I was just like, this just isn't five stars. But man, was it a really, really good book. And I really recommend you read it. So 4.5. 4. 4. 5. All right. That's acceptable, I guess. Though I will say, I do think that they marketed it as if it was a romanticy. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's just not the main point of the of the No, of and the story. it's not. The romance is like, a, like, honestly, a C-plot. I think her relationship to the nightmare is even more important than her relationship to the boy. But it is there, and I did enjoy it. That's actually where I like. Yeah, like, Raven is... Oh, I get... Oh, gosh. I don't know if that's a spoiler. The main no. love interest... I'm like, come on. You kind of know. Uh, the yeah. main love interest is, like, just the... He's, like, the, the, the object in the room. Like, it's really her in the nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, like, old books were criticized? Like, I, I mean, like, old even just, like, 10 years ago. And, like, especially books written by men. But these books were criticized for the women only existing in the story to, like, further the man's plot. And, like, and that kind of, like, the Mary Sue. Yeah, really. Raven's a little bit of a Mary Sue. I mean, he's got some killer lines. And I think he's going to be really pivotal in the next book. But I will say he just kind of existed as, like, a unit with his family, for Elsbeth to interact with than like his own yeah. developed yeah. character. Yeah. Like in this book, you're kind of like, oh, I'm sure there's a love interest. And you meet him <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like, cool. Okay. I really think we're going to fall in love with him in the next book because yes. of the ending, which we'll get to later. But yes, I gave this book five stars. I, <laughs> was I really loved it. Honestly, so obsessed. And I said this at the time and I think, my opinion has only been more solidified the further I've gotten away from the book, which is rare because I feel like I usually will rate a book right away and, and give it a little bit nicer of a rating simply because, you know, you're coming off that finishing the book high and it's also like ingrained in your mind. But now that I'm two, three months out from reading this book, I still want to rave about it. We did a blind book exchange and this is the book that I gave because I just want everyone and their mother to read it. (laughs) I think even though the fantasy, the magic is complex, I think that someone who's not a huge fantasy reader could still read it and enjoy it yeah it's accessible for sure yeah like I don't know if it should be your first fantasy book but I don't think it would be like the worst thing if it was because I feel like other you you can just kind of brush the magic system off if you need to (laughs) and just be like oh fun gothic fantasy vibes um but I want to read some of what I said at the moment Mm. uh because I think it still holds true I said, uh, five stars. I loved this. Possibly the best read of the year. And so far, I mean, I did read Cersei this year as well. And so, like, they're fighting each other. But I think this one tops because it's just got more of my fantasy. 
The gothic yet whimsical feel was dreamy and horrific. The prose was unmatched. The magic system was so incredibly unique. And I can't wait to read book two. But I'm very excited. I've been like, honestly, I wanted Peyton to read it because I wanted her to experience this story that I really love. I wanted to be able to talk about it and make a video about it for you guys because I'm so obsessed with it. But also I knew we were going to make a video and I've just been like itching to read book two. And I, I wanted to like be able to talk theories and stuff for this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing is that I don't usually like, crave to read the next book and I've been like like when I first finished it I was like oh I can't wait like I wish Peyton had already read this book I wish I could start pick up the next book immediately which is really <laughs> exciting for a book to do that but yeah. the ending fire and I think that was part of it I feel I feel the same way like I think a week from now I mean I'm gonna I have so much to read but I like wanna, I, I want to read the next one right away too because yeah. I'm already in the world and like it was a little complex to get into but not in a, not in like a scary way um, yeah but yeah like, I'm I'm ready I'm ready and I'm also ready to talk about the spoilers of the book <laughs> um so with that being said yes please leave if you don't want spoilers goodbye to everyone that doesn't want to be spoiled Bye. um and let's jump in here so El Elspeth gets this nightmare in her mm -hmm. head she her infection, her curse of using a card is different than any other persons we've seen because yes. she touched this nightmare card and whatever mm -hmm. was in that card went inside of her brain and body. And in the book, they even said, like, um, whoever can uh, touch her, is it M? Elm? I forget. Who oh, who I forget. Whoever can touch yeah. and kind of, like, see inside a person's um, mm -hmm. head, he's... He was like, I see it wrapped around your spine, almost yes. like in our spinal cord as like human beings. Like that is like what keeps us. Uh, yeah. That's everything. And so for you to be, I just thought like that image of something wrapped around yes. your spine. You can't do anything about that. Like we thought it was no. infecting her brain, but actually is infecting her whole body. Um, I thought that image was so cool. Yes. Or even every time. It was like the nightmare like drew his claw against like my mind, or like, like that the, was such the clicking. Like, yes, the clicking his of his like, claws. Mm -hmm. It was just such clear imagery for something that's like inside of her, but I can like see it. Yes, yes. So she touches this, and she learns. Or from what I understand, is that she will not use any other cards because mm -hmm. she feels that if she touches it, it's going to become her yes which is very interesting i don't know if that's necessarily how it and i have a theory for the next book work. is that that's not true it's just that we know that this king shepherd put himself in within this yes. nightmare card and that bitch just happened to touch it mm -hmm. and clung so, on to him for some lineage reason i'm not sure this uh -huh. is all theories here guys <laughs> and i think in the next book, but I, now we know how this ends. Oh God, there's it's so complicated. Ah, it's uh, so she, it's yes. so much. So, but like she's not entirely sure, and like she doesn't find out until much later in the book even what her degeneration is because she hasn't really literally any like of the these last signs. three chapters. But <laughs> it is yeah. But it's so exciting. Like right in the beginning, we were talking about fairy tale influences, and it felt like Little Red Riding Hood when she's walking home alone in the night and she's got like this red cloak on her, at least in my mind, I don't care if she didn't actually have one on and she's attacked by the highway men. Uh, also side note, can we talk about the British slang in this? Because it's like the depth of the wood. Every time it was wood and not woods, I like internally cringed a little bit. And I know the that's wood. just a British thing, but even the yeah. highway men like is folklore ish, but it, I was like, this yeah. is a British influence. Uh, Definitely. Anyways, so she's attacked and she can basically like she she can't use the nightmare's powers. The nightmare uses his powers through her, which she's is a ask. very important <laughs> distinction of like agency and control and kind of yeah. foreshadows what happens at the end. And I think that's part of the reason I love this magic system so much is because even though she's a unique case, she is not controlling him she has to let him take control to like speed her away right like she has this nightmare card inside of her yeah but actually and to 
activate a card you have to tap it three times and we see Mm -hmm. people use it all throughout the book and it's cool whatever but for her it's like no you don't have the nightmare card you just have the nightmare you have the monster they call it the monster in her head like it's so strange and so like, but like crazy. cool it's cool and like uh, they're kind of besties which is like kind of fun <laughs> until they're not <laughs> yeah i honestly i loved him i was a little worried that there was going to be a romance between yeah me him too. and her and i think that's just our like overdose in the system of shadow daddies that yeah i was like Oh my god! I was like, I don't. I didn't want her to fuck the monster. Honestly, no. I was like, uh, it's like literally in your head. It's like kind of like a Stockholm syndrome. Like she like has had this. She's been so lonely, yeah, her whole life, and she, but she's had this nightmare monster in her head. So like she loathes him, but then also <laughs> like craves his company, and like he, this man is so sassy. Like it's fun to read, but it's so Mm -hmm. bad. Now that we know why. (laughs) Yes. Kind of on that train of thought, I know it's skipping ahead and we'll go back to stuff if we need to. But I loved getting introduced to the these visions she was having. And when she finally did see the one dark window, like the fact that that wasn't just like a prosy ass title, but like is a thing. Uh, that's where I really was feeling like that gothic setting when she's like in the gardens and she's seeing this mist and then she like in her dreams is going back to that space but like right but but he's like not the nightmare in the dreams he was seeing him as the shepherd king like as a prince and that was just it was trippy gothic magic and that okay so there's a couple things like that i remember that see is that when raven takes her yeah he like takes her to show her it. and he's like i used to play here as a kid yeah and she's like bitch i literally had a dream about this like <laughs> this literally haunts my nightmares and this where you played as a kid <laughs> when she i think either that night or then in, in the vicinity of time when she goes to sleep and then wakes up outside in the gardens right by that. What was the nightmare doing with her body? What was he doing when she went to sleep? Like, that's so, like, that's horrific in, like, such a juicy way. And I feel like Rachel Gillings was not afraid to, like, tell the story she wanted. And I am, sp- I have been so sick of watered-down fantasy stories where – It's like the author never walks the edge and everything is always so clean cut and no one's morality is ever in question. Even if you think they're the bad guy, they're not actually the bad guy. And to have an author who's like, no, we're going to get weird. We're going to get gothic. We're going to get dark was so refreshing. And also leaving those little holes of like, but those tiny ones where, like, maybe she can yeah. come back and you're like, oh, my God, that's right. Like, I didn't even, like, think about that. So since we're on the topic of Raven taking Elsbeth to the one dark window. Yes. Obviously, Raven is our love interest. He's mm-hmm. supposed to be that, like, leader of the Destriers. Like, he's, yeah. like, in charge. But, like, we find out he's infected. And, you know, he's protective over her. They have a little, like, fake dating, not really, situation. (laughs) Barely. Um, (laughs) That's where I kind of had trouble with the romance. But, like, I get it. I feel like book two is where he's really going to thrive as a character. Um, But, you know, you were talking about uh, how it's, like, what was the nightmare doing with her body? (laughs) I have an issue like mm. I was thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I would not be having sex if I had a fucking monster in my <laughs> head. And then they say in the book, like to like make it feel better. This is the one part that icked me out. She's like, the oh, he goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like, hey, can you can you disappear a little bit? Can you? <laughs> like I don't know. Like well, it reminded me about- of Fourth Wing a little bit, like with the dragons. Yeah, like when yes. they know they know when they bang, and I'm like, oh my god. Uh, can, can you imagine? Could not be me. Read? Like even like having sex, yes, but even like taking a shit. Like, I would be so embarrassed if someone's in my head. Or, like, what if you're doing something weird? 
Yeah, you, like, you like pick your nose. Like, did you see yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> like when I was a kid, I was so paranoid. I thought like my parents just had cameras everywhere. They did it. They were great parents. Like this was just my anxiety speaking. But I would be so paranoid. I was like, what if I'm just being a little freak on my own? And someone's like watching me. Like, <laughs> like dance and doing a little dancey dance. Yeah. <laughs> no, like he's always there. And she's like, th- like the writing was like, oh, like the monster goes to sleep it's like mm, yeah i don't know about that <laughs> yeah, this is not a this is a threesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> the shepherd king is certainly involved <laughs> yes speaking of the romance i have two moments that i really did enjoy even though it's such a subplot also i saw someone review this book i think it's the book leo or something like that i'm not entirely sure but uh she was like well uh the main character's name the love interest name was raven and that icked me out and i was like it oh. didn't make me out like no what? i thought raven was like a fitting gothic fantasy and she relates it back to the bird in the yeah like they're like like his name like and i was yeah. like okay cool like yes <laughs> But I have here one, I loved the like calling each other by like their like Christian name or given name. And so he was calling her like by their last names for the longest time. And then they have to be like, we're close now. So we'll call each other by our first names. Oh, yeah. The one chapter ended like he's like Miss Spindle. She goes, no, and you'll call me Elspeth. And I was like, yes, that's cute. I love that moment. I think that's that's such just like a fun like culture thing also talking about like things that we don't see in fantasy as much anymore is like actually having like not dated sensibility but I like when there's fantasy elements to it I hate when it's like the fantasy world but it's entirely modern and their sensibilities and yeah like, like calling each other by their last name it just reminded me honestly of the infernal devices which was fun. Yeah, because this does feel like a time piece too. Like it's yeah. so long ago. Um, yeah, with the cobblestone. I also have saved here a quote uh, that I don't like. I was just like, I was like, oh, like there's some romance going on. <laughs> uh, she goes, I glanced up at him. What about you, Captain? Are you too nice for your own good? He watched me, something I could not read flashing in his gray eyes. No, Miss Spindle, he said. I'm not nice at all. And I just okay. feel like, like that's where I want the like, like Tension. dark, mysterious, yeah. instead dark of tension. being like an asshole. Like I feel like yes. these love interests always have to be dicks, and like Raven is to a point, but like he doesn't hide how he feels about her either. Yeah, it's more of like a like a reserve. Like I'm not nice at all. Like like poet like give me a cigarette me, yeah if you're a real person i'd be laughing out loud at that line but without being like like leaning into her and being like looking at her tits and being like oh, why don't you try me or something like you know what i mean like i can just see an akatar boy being yeah. like well, come at me like i'm or like you'd call me nice if i took you to bed or some yeah, shit yeah like something <laughs> so like dirty and i feel like we just get this just sort of i don't know just this poetic nature about yes. that and i think that's why i mentioned divine rivals earlier mm-hmm. cuz i'm like this is the love interest i was like looking for out of that that yeah. just like deeper in the ground i don't know it feels so just like dark and deep and uh-huh. just hot in a very poetic yeah like yes. cigarettes on rooftops kind of like way exactly um, I also loved when they teased him about having a crush on her and his like cheeks got red and stuff like that. I was like, yes, Bless let a man me. pine. Let a man grovel for a girl. I loved it was early in the book when they're all at that dinner party and she like runs away mm-hmm. and then they end up in his room. I remember them like getting really close to kissing like they didn't kiss in that scene yeah. but it was one of those like our lips almost touch and they were like in the dark but she could see <laughs> the glow that's when she finds out he has a nightmare card because oh he right. she sees it glowing in his pocket yeah i don't know that scene i need to re i need to reread that because i read that <laughs> last week and i just remember like I, every time I read a fantasy book that I end up really liking that I rate mm-hmm. four stars or higher, there's always a part in the book where I'm like, this is my favorite scene. And oh, that was yeah. one of them. But mm-hmm. I have to reread that. But I, I, really, I really like that. I like that part. Yeah. The the slow burn tension. Yes. Is very, very nice. All right. Kind of moving back in time. I want to talk about, how do you say her name? Ione. 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 Oh, I don't like that. I don't either. 
<laughs> I don't either. I didn't know how to feel about her for the entirety of this book because she seems like she was cool and then she wasn't. <laughs> yeah, like she was a friend and then she took the maiden card and she has such a complex relationship, which I do think was like a little bit more realistic too, especially like girls who struggle to have like female friends. Like Peyton and I have talked about this yeah. before where like sometimes like you just like like don't click with like the main like yeah, all the, the other girls. girls the way some people do. Yeah. And I don't have a lot of girlfriends. And so I felt like there was something, like, grounding in that. She's then, giving like, Nesta energy. <laughs> is she? Like, yeah, I think she's going to have a crazy character arc in the next book. I think well, she's going to have a crazy ca- – like, going to end up with one of Raven's boys. Like, Yeah, I think she might end up with the other Rowan brother, the Hoth guy. No, that's who, she, I, that's who she's with now. Oh, well, then I think she's going to end up with the other one that's not Hoth. Elm? No. I'm looking it up now, everyone. Because mm. she's engaged to the bad one who, like, Elspeth yeah, was like, oh, my God, I think he beats women. Yeah, that's Hoth. He, she gets, um, yeah, their uncle, Elspeth's uncle, her dad, mm-hmm. um, is like, oh, yes, like, here. Uh-huh. Like, and that's I how she gets her maiden card. card. And, he, like, he, you know, we get this political power now because yes. my daughter's going to marry Prince Hoth. So okay. that's who she's with. Um, yes, because at the end of the book, him and Ornan, the physician, mm-hmm. who she kills. But he's there at the end and, like, gets really beaten up. Um, who's wait. Hoth's brother, the other Rowan prince, who's working with our crew for I the heist? I think that's the, one, that's the one that's infected, correct? Um, I don't know if he's infested. No, not the sick one. Out of our boys, we have Raven, who is technically sick. We have Hoth, who is the bad prince. Then we have the other guy who has, like, daddy or mommy issues. And Correct. he ha- he has the other scythe card that's working with us. And then we have the boy who sees, like, the visions or prophecies who's really sick okay correct yep so okay um this this is how this is gonna go so <laughs> yeah raven you the you family yes. he has a sister and a brother mm-hmm. and um that's emery is the brother okay yes and that's then the jesper boy. is the sister okay which yes. we know and love okay so they're all you know together Gay icon um <laughs> elm rowan is he comes off at first like a dick. <laughs> yes, yes. But then we find out that he's just sick. He, oh, okay, he's also Elvis sick. sick. Everyone's sick. He's King Rowan's second son and Raven's cousin. And then okay. Hoth is the real asshole. Who's yes. wed to be, or oh, well, who's engaged with I- Ione, who is mm-hmm. Elspeth's cousin. <laughs> yes, so I, I think, think she's going to end up with Jesper. J- just be or not oh you think lesbian no sorry i meant emory but i'm down <laughs> for lesbian i'm down i think jesper <gasps> might be a lesbian i don't know if ioni she is. has to though but i'm down let's be a twist that would be a twist anyways ioni at the end because she starts being callous and i think she's like catching on to their plot because basically we have like raven squad the use are trying to steal are trying to get all the cards before the Rowans can get all the cards. Right. Because they both say they're going to, like, try to save the day, but, like, the U's don't think that the King's actually going to save the day. And, like, Brother's on a tipping, ticking time clock, so we got to, like, heal this shit up. We got to wrap it right. up. Right. Yep. They're, and like, taking charge. I only kept getting, like, suspicious of them and what they're doing and, like, the fake dating, like, the marriage alliance and all of that. But at the end, she betrays, she, like, lies to Hoth, doesn't she? And, yeah. like, kind of gives them, like, helps them out a little bit. Well, we see that flicker of, like, oh, there's a human in there. But yes. But she actually, at some point, because he uses the scythe card on her, she, mm-hmm. at that one, at the, that, like, game that they played. Oh, yeah, they play, like, almost, like, truth or dare. But yeah. But it's, like truth or truth everyone was saying like oh there's six glasses like why would he drink the truth 
poison like like why would he do that to him like <laughs> there's some like yeah it's like mm, hoth is an idiot he's like he, this <laughs> is hoth is the the mask to what's actually going on yeah um it reminds uh actually i, I can't say what it reminds him because that's a spoiler for another book series <laughs> but in <laughs> fantasy novels a lot mm-hmm. there's this like decoy person that yeah in the first book we're like oh yes this is the villain of the story it's like no 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 oh, wait Something's a minute deeper here and in this book it's crazy because we have the rowan family right like they're so mm-hmm. corrupt the king sucks all of that they're the bad guys but now we have king shepherd and he's yes. a bad guy so is and, he- but he's no, the thing is, he said to <laughs> Elspeth that he was going to protect the Yu family. Yes. And he didn't seem like, I really believe that he is not going to go back on that. I think he no, has I some agree. loose ends. He needs to tie the fuck up. And he has uh-huh. some things from years ago that he has been working towards and he wants. Well, and he hates the Rowans, right? Because he the king, the Rowans. King Rowan, is the one who kind of like fucked him over in some way. Along with his own greed. And you get the everything that rises must fall. And like mm-hmm. this whole power dynamic with like using these cards. Everything yeah. that's used has a direct consequence. And no matter how much uh, I felt like during this book the nightmare was going to let Elspeth th- like free. Or mm-hmm. give her the benefit of the doubt. It did not matter. He's like I just give you what you ask for. But yeah. realize every time you ask me for something, there are direct consequences to that. Yes. And it's this, oh. like, how much will you take because you're going to have to give that much more of yourself until there's uh-huh. something left? It's such a juicy character. Like, he has his own motivations. He has his own goals. And right. they are not aligned with Elsbeth. And and so that almost makes him seem like a bad guy because he's not on the good guy's side. And he certainly doesn't care about being good anymore. He's almost mad in the sense of we're only seeing like a shard of his soul that's preserved with the nightmare. Like this isn't the full shepherd king even. Right. And, and 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 he is taking control of her body. He is like, I mean, at the end of this book, Elspeth sacrifices herself and the nightmare is entirely in control to the point where it seems like Elspeth is dead. Now, right. Like she I loses think, it. I think she's truly, I think there's like a, a, a little ember of her left. I mean, there has to be. Yes. There, I mean, there has to be. <laughs> oh. She's our main character, but I do feel like Raven is going to be a very large POV chapter of this next book. Yeah, that's why I think he his his character does have a higher power. Yes. In this story. It's just he this was, book where like, mm, we didn't really need you. <laughs> we need someone to kind of tell the story and to watch the story from until Elsbeth like kind of gets her shit back together. And then I think they're going to find some type of balance. But it, it's just so juicy the way the nightmare is not her friend. But he's not necessarily her enemy. And he kind of like, oh, the third party factor yes. of it all and that's why i think this book is exceptional because of that element of that like twisted i don't know like it just it's just not like good and bad like there's this middle ground now and this lore with the cards and how this ends and like i think like what when, when they you know raven is in her head with the nightmare card which uh-huh. like i love the whole like you can't like get in my head with a nightmare card and he doesn't yeah. he has to and oh, she came around a little too quick because she's like no 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 and then the <laughs> next chapter she's like so we're gonna talk about that like it's okay i'm like over it now but like don't do it again like maybe and then she asks for i don't know like yeah that, yeah, like, yeah. Little wrap up like they mm-hmm. as the one thing once again with the love interest it was like she wanted that third act breakup but like we yeah. don't got time well, <laughs> so it like, was we, like we have like two chapters in my head we had like two chapters. Of yeah, it. because and she didn't want him to know. She didn't she want really him to was. find the nightmare. Yeah, and then it kind of got spoiled, anyways. And it was like kind of like this, like weird. Yeah, yeah. But what about when the nightmare was like Raven? Get out of her head. You're not welcome here anymore. Yeah. She's not here. 
She's not here. She's gone. I, when I started the book, I got to that very first scene where he like talks in her head as they're like hiding from the guards and stuff. And I texted Peyton. I was like, oh my God, you're going to love this. It seems like shadow magic. It's got your favorite trope. Like, I think they're going to be able to talk into one another's heads. I love it. And then she immediately is like, don't ever fucking do that again. And I was like, (laughs) damn it. Maybe it won't have as much of Peyton's favorite trope in it anymore. I know. I was like, maybe she'll come around to it and they'll all just talking each other. Maybe with book two. Maybe in book two. Yeah. I don't know where the bitch is, but you know, (laughs) the the funny thing is, I just think it's so cool how Raven has like the nightmare. I don't know. Like, I just like, I feel connected. Like they're connected. And, um, I think Raven this is like tin foil hat theory. I think by lineage, there's this hidden bloodline or family that he's oh, yeah. actually connected to somehow. Mm-hmm. And that is why the nightmare is basically like Raven, go the fuck away. I'm trying to get us right. So then yeah. you can like your family can come on in. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I really think that uh, the politics there and like, <sighs> I just, like, the fact that he was able to overtake her body. First of all, why her? Right? Why yeah. her? Um, I understand the prophecy, like, that you read on the back of the book. That's, yeah. like, so freaking cool. But, like, when he finally reaches her and she's, like, awake and he he realizes that, like, oh, my gosh. And they switched from I to we. Yes. Oh, the my we, God. When it switched, when it switched to we, that- I was, like. That's such a good like gothic horror moment, like the like the bringing yeah. in to be like we are now this monster. It was uh, such a thriller esque moment, and it switched to Elsbeth felt this way. It was like we feel this way. I was like, <gasps> and the yeah. fact that Raven found out so quick, and mm-hmm. the nightmare was like, come with me. I was like, okay, this is gonna be an epic fucking story next book because yeah. I think they're gonna work together. Yeah. I also think they're going to be vil- like they're going to be enemies. It's like a frenemy situation. Kind of how yeah. Elspeth was with Nightmare, but now Raven's like that with this and tr- trying to save the woman he loves. Yeah, cuz Raven's like, "Oh shit, like you kind of like she gave you her she consented to, it. she gave you permission she was going to die if you didn't, but like you kind of killed my girl." Yeah. Like you cocked uh, and like I'm pissed. Um, yes, yeah, but they still have to but the Shepherd King is the only one who's going to know where the other outer card is. And how the book ends. literally his cards. Yeah. So they have to work with him because Raven's brother is still on the line. Literally. Uh, the, it's juicy. You have to read. You have to. Because you have the book. You have to read the last line. The last okay. line of the first book. It should be a sentence. The way that this book ends. I thought the book. The cliffhanger was going to be. Um, Raven goes and sees Elspeth. She opens her eyes and they're that yellow color. And I thought that's how it's going to end, kind of like Twilight, like when Bella opens her eyes and they're red. You're like, oh shit, she's a vampire. But it didn't. And so it ends like this, which is exciting. Yes. The wood knows no road, no path through the snare. Only I can find the twil- twin elders, for it was I who left it there. The rhyming ah! scheme? <laughs> the rhymes? Bust a bust oh and rhymes. <laughs> oh, um, speaking of the rhymes, real quick. So, if you guys don't know, this is a completed duology. We probably should have said that in the beginning, but that's yeah. fine. Uh, <laughs> Two Twisted Crowns is already out. So, if you were very intrigued by this, if you read book one, you can go right ahead to book two. But Rachel Gilling has a new book coming out next year called The Night and the Moth. And I'm super excited for it. The cover is the sexiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay. It's so gorgeous. Uh, but I follow her on Instagram. Super aesthetic. She like really does lean in and commit to the gothic bit in her it. IRL life. Lo- love a woman. Anyways, someone asked on her Instagram story about the next book and was like, will there be rhymes again? And she was <laughs> like, she was basically like, yeah, there'll be a few rhymes in the next book. Oh so I guess that's just gosh. part of her style. <gasps> the n- Oh my gosh, I can already, so I'm looking at, I'm looking at this book cover. Dude, it's almost like she lives two different lives. It's it's giving Joan of Arc. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think the preview, there was like a preview of like the first page. And it was something about her like, oh, I don't, 
uh, this is my name, but I don't remember my old name. This was the name that was given to me. I don't remember my old life or something like that. I don't know. It. Oh, and I'm seeing spray that just people. Cool. Ah, ah, I'm, I'm seeing so an exclusive. Excited. Yeah, that's so, so exciting. Excited. Um, so yeah, like now in this, I'm excited to read the next book because like <laughs> what quest are we going on? Like, and the fact that um he was he was keeping all this information from Elspeth the whole time, yes. and that he is really the one that <laughs> and is in charge. Like he knows yeah. where the card is. Like he. He just, well, I guess, maybe needed the body to do it. I, We're going to find out. I think he needed the motivation. He needed the control. Because there's also, like, this bit of, like, the victor writes the history. Because yeah. they didn't have the full story of what happened to him for the longest time. Elspeth was, like, kind of figuring it out. Like, who are you? <laughs> and, like, he didn't share it all. And he's very mysterious. Ah, I'm so excited. Yeah. Also, at the very end there, when she's, like, trapped and the physician's killing her, one- that's such like a like burn the witch moment where they're yeah. like, I don't like the girl with magic. Um, <laughs> I when he took control and they switched to the B- we POV and all of that, I was so utterly convinced that Elspeth was dead and never coming back again. And I was just like, I cannot believe this. I don't really feel that anymore. But in the moment, I was like, this girl's gone. She's not coming back. And I was like, and you're a fucking idiot for not guessing that because it literally says on the cover, not of my special editions, but of the paperback. It literally says on the cover, like monster maiden or like maiden monster martyr. Martyr is on the cover and she literally sacrifices herself. And I was like, you are a fucking idiot for not (laughs) seeing that. Hey, you know what? But like, that's all part of it. You know, <laughs> you're like, I. <laughs> that's happened a couple times in these books. But with that being said, guys, I can't believe I actually finished this book. I'm very happy. I'm excited to read the next one. We will definitely do a review. Yes. Uh, when now that Aubrey and I are literally on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. So uh, let me know down below. Let us know in the comments uh, if you've read this book, what you thought of it. Um, if you agree with mm-hmm. us with the love interest, but like, come on, really agree with us that like this magic system was so freaking cool and different. It was different. Yes. Um, and let us know if you did read the next one. No spoilers just yet. Um, but let us know what you thought of it because duologies are tricky. Is a tricky thing to do. Um, and I'm just happy because I'm tired of reading these long series. So, as Honestly. always, <laughs> like, subscribe. We're a hardcover podcast everywhere um we're yes. on uh if you're on youtube right now we're on spotify if you're on spotify we're on apple music um we're, all, we're on all the things so please 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 it helps us more than you know yes thank you guys so much for joining us and happy reading guys i saw on goodreads that peyton gave this book only four stars so we're gonna have some tough conversations coming up a little embarrassing on her part clearly 